artists are now taking advantage of artificial intelligence. One mother told CNN that she received a call with a voice that sounded just like her daughter before another person demanded a million dollar ransom. Fortunately, after another call to 911 and an effort to reach her daughter, it was exposed as a kidnapping scam. Joining me now to talk about this growing issue is Dr. Shavik Das, an assistant professor at CMU. And I, I mean, how AI is advancing and how it's now being used sometimes against us, it's really incredible and almost hard to wrap your head around. Oh, yeah, totally. So the pace of development is exponential, which a lot of people, you know, it, it's like a math term. So what does that mean? It's, it's kind of crazy. It means that all of the progress we made in the last five years might happen in one year. In one year, right. And this is something that you guys were actually studying now. And how, so how, how are you studying this? In what way? Yeah, so um, we're looking at ways that AI is sort of like an inflection point when it comes to sort of scams and uh, security vulnerabilities and things like that. And the way to think about it is like, what is the nature of your reality? A lot of us, we kind of think about uh, you know what's true using our sensory perception. I, if I see it, I believe it. Um, based on social proof, if a lot of other smart people seem to believe this, then maybe it's true. And doing our own independent research. And the way that AI has sort of lowered the barrier to be able to create like incredibly photorealistic and audio realistic um, scam uh, media has sort of, sort of totally upended how we think about sensory perception uh, and, and what's true. Well, and I know like some of this came up in the last presidential election. Um, I know we've seen it. I mean, I've even seen videos posted and I know it was silly, but it was like of this massive shark on a beach and somebody was like, that's the worst graphic CGI AI that I've ever seen. And meanwhile, I'm looking at it like, is this real? Because like, it, it looks real to me. If you if you yeah. know what you're looking at or looking for, mm -hmm. maybe you can spot it. But otherwise, it's hard. It is really hard. And, you know, even um, uh, forensic experts um, as uh, sort of generative AI gets better and better. Uh, it, it, it's not immediately obvious. Like you need to actually go in, you need to do sort of comparative analysis. It might take a week sometimes. And so how are scammers using cloned voices? How, do, how are they able to do that? I mean, in the case that we were talking about here in the beginning, it sounded just like that woman's daughter. Yeah, so um, there's a suite of sort of uh, AI technologies that you might categorize under what's called generative AI. This is where AI technologies can be used to create or synthesize media. Um, and deepfake technologies, of course, have been something that have caught the public eye for a while. This is a class of deepfake technology that essentially, if, the, if your vocal data is out there anywhere, like if you've ever uploaded like Facebook videos or YouTube videos, and it got into the wrong hands through a data breach or through bad privacy settings, that data can be fed into large models that can then synthesize uh, voice. So, but that, uh, that's almost all of us. Almost all of us have done something, posting a, a video on TikTok or Instagram, YouTube, yeah. for instance. So are we all kind of at risk of something like this then? How do we protect ourselves from it? It could be. So the people who, are, who tend to be most at risk for this particular class of scam, um, you know, there was a recent FTC report about it. It tends to be older adults. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something known as a grandparent scam right. that, the, that's going on right now where they'll synthesize the voice of a, grand, of a grandchild in a very emotionally charged situation. It's like they've hit somebody with their car, they've been kidnapped. Um, and then they'll call the grandparents who often have, you know, retirement savings and maybe a little bit less familiar with the technology. And it'll be this very emotionally charged situation. And so your guard is lowered. And so you don't do your normal checks. Um, and it's really important for everybody to keep in mind that this sort of thing is possible now. It's not going to happen to everybody, but it's, it's easy enough that it might happen to you. Yeah. It just feels like in this big wide world, how does one person become a victim of something like this? Like how are they targeted? And, and you just don't know how you're going to be picked out of that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it's impossible to say at this point. There's so many data breaches where, in, where information about you, meta information about you, like who you're connected to, might be out there to CD parties you've never heard of. And oftentimes it's not personal. As part of your your study in all of this and what you guys are examining, is there a way to stop this from getting worse? Is there something that we can, I mean, because me at home, somebody at home watching this, they're like, I can't yeah. stop AI from developing, yeah. but how, how do we get ahead of this? So one thing to keep in mind is that AI has changed things in a big way, but these sorts of scammers and scam artists have, uh, have always existed, and this is a new tool that they have in their tool set. Um, it is important to stay more vigilant because AI allows for attacks on sensory perception in a way that hasn't been possible before. But just remember that if it's sort of being communicated to you over the internet or even through your phone, if you're not physically seeing the other person, the genie is a little bit out of the bottle. So uh, applying a little bit of healthy skepticism, if this is an emotionally charged situation where somebody's asking for money, 
See if you can call back. And if you can't, then that's probably a sign. That's a red flag. Mm -hmm. Do you have any specific fears or worries about what's to come in the future? Um, yeah, sure. I, I, I have several. And, and um, the thing that sort of bothers me a little bit the most right now is, so we talked about attacks on sensory perception, but AI is also allowing for attacks on social proof and research by sort of the automatic synthesis of misinformation articles and AI hallucinations. So as we start to rely a little bit more on AI technologies, which is not necessarily a bad thing, there are just some new dangers that we need to be aware of. And so irresponsible use of these AI technologies could result in potentially problematic outcomes. AI hallucinations. I've never heard of that before. I feel like we need to have you back for a whole segment on that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sure. Really appreciate your insight into Thanks this. Thanks for having me, Heather.